So I'm really excited to be here working on this project. Perhaps not as excited as the people over there, but I don't know if I've ever been as excited <laughs> as the people over there. So I've got to find out what's going on. Um, Kristen did an amazing job of laying out how complicated it is to put together the partnerships to make something like this happen and all of the moving pieces. So hopefully I'll be able to fill in a little bit about what you do once you actually manage to get all these pieces together and what some of the real upside potential is to make it worth investing all of that effort and all of those resources to make an evaluation come together. So, this is a really novel opportunity in a couple of different ways. The Nurse Family Partnership model has been around for decades. The idea is for nurses to go to the homes of first-time low-income moms during their pregnancy and for the first two years after the kids are born to try to give them the kind of social supports, education, information, access to other uh, programs, really integrate them into the social safety net and give them the resources they need to have healthy pregnancies and healthy kids. And the reason that marries well with the idea of a Medicaid waiver is that if they really are able to succeed in keeping kids out of the emergency department and out of the hospital, reducing preterm birth, increasing birth spacing, that in principle ought to save money for Medicaid because they will spend fewer dollars downstream. So that kind of early child childhood investment can pay long dividends, if that all works. Well, getting resources from Medicaid to something that's not a traditional health service, like sending a nurse into somebody's home and not necessarily delivering health care, that could sound like a slippery slope. We know that investments in education also affect health, so should we spend the Medicaid budget on uh, education, or should we spend the Medicaid budget on housing? Well, it only makes sense for those investments to flow outside the healthcare system in the way we currently budget things if you can make a case that it really does affect health and there's an accountability for the healthcare spending that might be reduced because of those investments. So you really need to measure those things, but if you can, it can free up program flexibility to break down silos so that you can have some of your programmatic budgets from Medicaid or welfare or education go where they're actually gonna do the most good and only go there if they actually work. So the combination of the accountability through the social impact bond, pay for success kind of framework, the Medicaid waiver to have more flexibility for what to do with the Medicaid dollars, and then the rigorous evaluation to make sure that it actually worked before you throw more money at that. That's a recipe, I think, for innovation across a lot of different social safety net programs. So that makes it really exciting to me, and I hope worthwhile for Christian and NFP and all of the foundations that funded this and the Social Impact Bond Lab and the Government Performance Lab to invest all the resources to make this happen. It certainly seemed exciting to us as researchers. And there are some real challenges there, though, because the program's trying to scale up, as Christian said. Can it operate at scale? There's some early evidence from the 70s and the 80s that the nurse family partnership really did achieve those outcomes and that's part of why those outcomes were the focus but is that going to work at scale this benefits never been available to Medicaid recipients before maybe it performs differently in that population times are different a lot of the evidence came from the 70s and 80s and, and early 90s the world is different. Medical care looks different. The population giving birth in South Carolina looks different. They're trying to operate at lower cost than they were before. So lots of things are changing, and it really does take rigorous evidence to make sure the program's delivering on those benefits. And that's a risk for the Nurse Family Partnership, for the state, their political reputation's at stake, there are millions of dollars at stake. And uh, Christian put it very well when thinking, well, the program delivery people would kind of like to see the results before we go tell everyone about that. And that's not to impugn Nurse Family Partnership. They're wonderful partners in this. I think that's a universal phenomenon that people investing their life's work in delivering social safety net benefits are doing so because they think they work or they wouldn't be spending all of their time and energy trying to do this. And as this is something that uh, I think evaluators the world around face as a challenge when you go into a program and say, would you like me to tell you whether you're actually doing anything or not? They say, no, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> um, and don't worry, I'll tell everyone in the world at the same exact moment. Um, it doesn't sound like a really good idea to most people, but to the great credit of everyone involved, they really want to know if this works and they really want to uh, put their money behind the bet that it does. So uh, there are four specific metrics that are part of the pay for success aspect of this, where if the program successfully 
reduces preterm birth, increases birth spacing, reduces childhood visits to the hospital in the ED, and targets the low-income families that they think are most important to serve, then they have these success payments as a reward for achieving those goals. Those are really important outcomes, and I talked about why that's the underpinning of tying this to a Medicaid waiver, but as a research and health policy and social policy community, we're really interested in a much wider array of outcomes. In principle, and I think there's some suggestive evidence, investing in these early childhood health improvements ought to yield dividends in terms of kids' performance in school, reduced use of other social safety net programs, child protective services, improved employment outcomes for the moms. If you can increase birth spacing so that you have more healthy birth spacing as opposed to births in less than two-year intervals, the moms should do better, the kids should do better. That should manifest in lots of different ways. South Carolina is an incredibly data-rich state, and one of the reasons it was so exciting for us in j and at Harvard to partner on this project is that we're going to be able to trace a really wide array of outcomes for many years to come using administrative data in South Carolina. And that's a really important asset that states and local governments have, is access to administrative databases. It's really expensive to go interview people. You know, each person that you have to find later on requires lots of resources for tracking and you're bound to have less than 100% response rate and it's a real challenge, especially for long-term research. We want to know how these kids and their siblings do in elementary school. That's years and years and years later. How are we going to go find them? Low-income populations move around. They're, you know, the, the kids may be in different school districts, they may have different names, it's very hard to find people. If you can use administrative data, it's a much more cost-effective way to get a lot of information and it's something that a lot of states and localities have on hand and being able to partner with researchers is a way to leverage some money they're already spending on collecting really good information into outcomes that might be of real value to the state. And South Carolina has one of the best data infrastructures that I've seen in terms of marrying lots of different data sets. So that's, that's an exciting opportunity for us as well. Uh, we are, uh, doing a baseline survey of all the moms who come through the door who want to participate in nurse family partnership. We're getting their consent to follow them in administrative data and then we're never having to interact with them directly again. So there's not a big burden placed on them for being part of the study and we can get much longer term outcomes than we'd otherwise be able to afford. The randomized evaluation is operating on about 6,000 moms over about a four-year intake period or a six-year service period. Remember, the nurse family partnership starts when the mom is pregnant and goes through the child's second year. So we're, in, we're intaking about 1,500 moms a year, NFP is, into the study. They're being randomized, two-thirds to the treatment group, one-third to the control group, and then we're following them through the program to report on the pay for success outcomes and then for years beyond, you know, the IRB, how long would you like to follow them? Forever, is forever okay? <laughs> no, forever is not okay. 20 years? <laughs> so we're following the kids until they're 18 and then they don't have to be in the study anymore. But it, it's great to be able to have that span of outcomes. It's key that this is the only way that moms in South Carolina get access to NFP, is through the study. There's no selection into NFP outside the avenue of being randomized in the study. Now that's really important for the validity of the study. It makes a lot of sense when you think that because of the Medicaid waiver and the pay for success contract, this program scaled up enormously in South Carolina. They're serving many more moms than they were able to serve otherwise because of the generous resources that have been made available. And so those extra resources are flowing through this randomization process to get a lot more moms access to NFP. It all sounds fine intellectually, and I think it all is fine ethically, morally, intellectually, but it's really challenging to now have nurses who are out in the field have to randomize moms into treatment or control groups. And I, I use, there, there are many study staff members from NFP in the audience now, and Michelle found these little dogs. I love these little dogs. They have apparently lots of hats. It's just one dog, many hats, one dog. That's the important part. Um, we are now asking the NFP staff, 
whose job in life is to deliver services to vulnerable moms, to make connections with them the minute they walk through the door, to say, okay, spend an hour interviewing this woman who's probably facing lots of challenges early in pregnancy, maybe really scared about what's to come, build a relationship with her, then roll the dice, and for a third of them say, sorry, I can't do anything else for you, but here's a gift certificate, good luck with that pregnancy thing. That sounds like a terrible situation to be face to face with. In truth, many, many more moms are getting served because of the evaluation. There are more resources, NFP's scaled up, many more moms are being served, and in South Carolina, NFP was never able to serve all of the moms who would be eligible for NFP. Now, though, they're actually having to interact face to face with moms who are not going to get served because they're going to be in the control group. So that's a real challenge to make sure that your study partners have the resources to deal with. And resources, I mean social supports, talking points ways to interact with moms for all of this to make sense and make sure that nobody is worse off and more people are better off. That's something that we've been working actively with NFP and with our other partners to make sure works smoothly. This is a very long-term project. I, uh, Michelle, again, our, our co-author and project manager put up a timeline the other day for the study team and I was sort of tracing out like 2022. I still have to be working on this in 2022? And yes, and, and in fact the, the nurses who are dealing with this new study randomization process as well as the study delivery, the service delivery model, we have to make sure that they don't burn out on the extra responsibilities and that the study partners are around to be partners for the years to come. Tying the hands of future administration sounds great. Let us know how we can help with that. Um, but it is really important that the, the supports continue to be there because even when something's up and running smoothly, there are always going to be bumps along the road. And we have a thousand moms enrolled already, but that's only a sixth of the way there so far. Uh, that said, key to getting this up off the ground, and I think a lesson for all kinds of projects of this sort, is having a good pilot period. And th thanks to foundation funding for that, we were able to pilot this for a few months and work out a lot of the kinks along the road. This is the NFP model, delivering these services to the moms, that's well established. Throwing randomization on top of that, you can write it down pretty simply, oh, we'll just hand you a tablet, it's got a random number generator built in, and you'll just do that on the front end and then go about your business as usual. Of course, it is not nearly so simple, and working out all of the little kinks in, oh, we don't have Wi-Fi service, what happens then? Or we need to add a question to the survey, what happens then? Uh, that was really important. Uh, but having overcome some of those challenges and now being up in the road, I want to close by just emphasizing what an important opportunity this is because we'll be able to generate the kind of evidence that I think will inform not just nurse family partnership policy and maybe expanding that program if it is indeed serving moms well and, and reducing uh, bad health outcomes and improving mom's economic well-being, but also as a model for really working across program silos to deliver maternal and child health as well as other social supports outside of the traditional channels. Innovation in social service delivery, I think, is best accomplished with the kind of accountability that comes with the social impact bond or pay for success model. And if this works well as a demonstration of this kind of model, I'd love to see it applied in a much wider array of settings. So I will stop there and turn it over to our next panelist.